Yeah, man, I got something interesting for you today. You know, it's not even a long video. I'll show you the issue and I'll show you how I fixed it. I really recommend you watch the whole thing. So, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you're gonna buy a used car, make sure you look under the hood before you pay for it. So now, that's a proverb, right? So, it's speaking metaphorically, used car. It's applicable to guitars, or in this case, to bass guitars. And uh, the whole thing about looking under the hood is also metaphorically speaking, right? It means to look at everything. So this guy bought a, a jazz bass off of Reverb and brought it in for a setup. Well, that's what he thought we were gonna be doing. But then I looked at everything and I discovered a whole bunch of issues. So he really wanted to do the whole job which we did, but there's this one particular issue that uh, stands out as interesting. So uh, I decided to document it and make a video for you. And that's what we're gonna be watching today, right? So welcome back to Guitar Quackery. This bass has a, a really good neck, but the neck has a, an issue, a problem that we need to fix. Uh, it's a good neck in in the sense that the wood grain is really nice. So why don't I show you that first? Uh, as you can see, the growth rings uh, appear to be parallel with the, with the headstock and with the fretboard because we can see that they meet right here at the center. They are parallel on both sides and, uh, and they are symmetrical on both sides of the skunk stripe. They do not twist. So this is uh, potentially a good neck but there's an issue, uh, quite an issue. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little gap here. Uh, I'm going to insert a feeler gauge here so that you can see it better, right? So it starts around here. It continues all the way down the neck, all the way down to about here. So um, first we are going to examine this gap a little closer just to see uh, um, how wide it is. We can see here that um, there is in fact a gap between. So why don't we look a little closer. Let's put the feeler gauge back inside here. We can see it's quite a gap, yeah? We can even zoom in a little bit. I already removed some um, junk out of out of there uh, with the feeler gauge just dug it out and now um, I'm going to fill it now uh, we can even measure the you know width of the gap uh, using feeler gauges so here I already know what it is so I'm just going to insert it I'm going to show you uh, it goes in right so that's the width at the top, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So I, I assume it's narrower at the bottom. And um, I measure it to be eight one thousandths of an inch or 0.2 millimeters, just like that, yeah? So we do need to do something about this. I'm going to fill this gap. We have a couple of option, we, options. We could use super glue or epoxy. I have a feeling epoxy might be easier to work with, so I'm leaning towards using epoxy. Yeah, sorry. Guitar quackery. Ah, let me explain that. Yeah. Oh, make sure you subscribe. Viewer wants to know why not just use wood filler? Well, wood filler, most uh, wood filler options are water-based and they shrink and they become brittle. So you want to use something that is not going to shrink. Now there are some wood filler options that are used, high-end wood filler options in the violin repair world, but let's uh, just uh, talk about that in a separate video on a separate project. I'm going to mask off both sides of the gap uh, using the feeler gauge as a guide so that I can uh, put the tape against the feeler gauge right there and put it down, lay it down. It's easier said than done. And then what I'm thinking is uh, move the feeler gauge in this direction. Okay. 
Yeah, it's not easy, but I think it's working. All right, so all the way down to here. Maybe, a, yeah. Move it down. And then I will do the exact same thing on the other side, right? So we maintain a gap between uh, both uh, sides of the masking tapes. So on the other side, I go like that. this works that's it so I've masked off both sides of the gap and now I'm going to fill it with epoxy and then obviously peel off the tape I can always check with a microscope that I have in fact um, maintained a gap between and I see that there is a gap it's not perfect but it's fine I could have mixed in really fine sawdust powder with the epoxy but um, I really had to keep this repair on budget because uh, there were so many other things wrong with this base and we just had to keep it on budget so I just did it this way this time all right so this is the epoxy I'm just going to uh, apply some here like that. I need to hurry because it's a five minute epoxy. So I don't want it to start uh, curing on me. Okay. And I'm just pressing hard just to get it inside. Also with uh, the gloved hand, with the gloved finger, I can just push down. So here I marked off where uh, the gap ends. Yeah, I feel it's uh, really going inside the gap. Okay, so this is good. Now, we just remove the tape. We smudged a little bit here, so I gotta clean that up. Just take it off like that. Make sure that this is good. Yeah, so that's it. Now we let it sit. I used five minute epoxy for this project. So what that means is after five minutes, it is no longer workable. You can start touching it, but it's still a little bit sticky. So if you wanna do any kind of finish repair on top of that, you would have to let it cure overnight first because you're gonna to have to do some sanding. But in this case, uh, we just had to do a quick on budget repair. To be honest, I only charged an additional $45 for, for what you see me do in this video, including the making of this video. Um, so yeah, I just had to keep it on budget. Uh, the idea was just to uh, seal off the cracks so that sweat doesn't go in when you play, eh, you know. And that's it, uh, we took care of the problem. We can also check with the microscope just to see, yeah. Nice close up. So
So once it cures, we can do a little touch up, a little wet sanding maybe, and it'll be good. Okay, <clears throat> fixed, right? It plays. It's an interesting bass. Customer bought it, I believe, on reverb. Ah. Okay. Make sure you don't click any of the buttons that say like, share, and subscribe, because if you did that, then the YouTube algorithm would keep suggesting these kind of videos to you in the future. But if you do click some of those buttons, or all of them, then uh, I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, uh, you can also buy me a coffee if you feel that I deserve one. You click the link below that says buy me a coffee, or you can buy some Guitar Quackery merch, right?